Now, the NHS uh, is uh, unsurprisingly proving to be a big issue in the election campaign. Uh, joining us now from Leicester is Labour's Shadow House Secretary, Jonathan Ashworth. Thank you for being on the show this morning. Um, before we move on to other issues around the election campaign, I just want to get your reaction to the interview with Prince Andrew. I'm not sure if you heard it, but what did you make of it? I've not, I've not seen it yet. I've seen the social media um, uh, uh, reports of it, but I've not actually seen the interview. Hopefully I'll get the chance to watch it uh, later today. But I think, uh, I, mean, I mean, I just think from what I've seen on social media, it's uh, the way in which uh, Epstein, uh, the attitudes towards Epstein, I mean, the, I mean, no one should be above the law in these things. And uh, look, uh, uh, you know, what was going on with the trafficking of young women is absolutely despicable. And I hope the authorities in the US, uh, I mean, obviously Epstein has killed himself, but I thought that I hope the authorities in the US can, can get to the uh, get to anyone else who is involved in this. It's, I mean, the trafficking of young women and abuse of them, absolutely appalling. Um, I've not seen the interview, um, so I'm not going to comment on um, on Prince Andrew, but, you know, ugh, I mean, what we've seen about with the Epstein case, I mean, just, just shocking. I understand you don't want to comment on uh, Prince Andrew, but do you feel that he should have apologised for his friendship? with somebody who was a convicted sex offender? Well, I mean, he gave his explanation as for his friendship and to why he was staying at his apartment. Um, I'll leave it for others to judge on whether his um, explanation is, uh, was apologetic or not. But uh, I think the key thing is now that the, the young women who were abused in the United States can get some justice. Obviously, they can't get the, ju the ultimate justice because Epstein's killed himself, but I hope they can. the authorities in the US can to ensure that some justice is delivered for those women who were abused in this absolutely disgusting case. OK. Um, we can move on now to uh, the election campaign and some of the policies that you are promising. Uh, Labour wants to see free dental checkups for everyone uh, in uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, so what exactly is the plan that you're proposing? So what we're proposing today is that we will scrap the charges for a dental checkup, and uh, which is a, which is a check, uh, getting your mouth checked, getting your teeth checked, uh, getting a scale and polish if necessary, getting an X-ray if necessary. It's called the Band One uh, NHS checkup, which you, which you have to pay around twenty-two pounds for at the moment. We're going to scrap that. It'll be free checkups, and and we actually think this is really important because. We do have an oral health crisis in the country. You've got more and more people using these. I don't know if you can see it. This is, this is a sort of dental kit you can buy from online or from a sort of pound shop. More and more people are doing what is called DIY dentistry because they cannot afford to go and see a dentist. Their teeth get worse and worse and worse and they try and do fillings on their own teeth. We have stories of charities that usually operate in the developing world or the poorest parts of the world w operating with mobile clinics in places like Dewsbury. We have stories of people trying to pull out teeth with pliers or trying to super glue in dentures. And of course, we have a real crisis amongst, for, for ch amongst children. Over 100,000 children admitted to hospital in the last few years because of tooth decay. And actually, when you look into, the, look into it, a lot of parents don't realise that children get free dental checkups. So we think by expanding access, we'll also have knock on effects to improving children's oral health as well. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying the interview prop that you brought along today. Um, <laughs> just, looking at the, um, just looking at the cost of this policy, uh, £450 million pounds a, a year, according to Labour. Now, people who are on low-income benefits already don't have to pay Band 1 charges, so isn't this quite a lot of money for a service that is already offered to people who can't afford it? Well, we want a universal NHS, which is why we think this is the correct thing to do. But of course, yes, there are some people on benefits who do get free checkups, but, uh, but also there are people on benefits who don't and sometimes get huge fines because of it. But there's also a lot of people in low paid work, zero hours contracts, temporary work, work of that nature, who cannot afford a checkup. And as a result, because they're not going to the dentist, 50% of people haven't been to the dentist in the last year for a checkup. Their teeth are really deteriorating, which is why we have this absolutely outrageous phenomena of so-called DIY dentistry on the increase. And ultimately what it means is more and more people going to hospital, over 100,000 people every year uh, presenting at A&E because of problems with their teeth, or, or going to see a GP because of problems with their teeth. So it's actually costing the NHS money uh, as well. So we think this will relieve burden, some, some of the burdens on A&Es, which we know are under intense pressure. You saw the, you saw the figures this week, the worst A&E waiting times in history, on, on record under this Tory government. So we think this will relieve some of that pressure, 
it will relieve some pressure on the GP. We all know how hard it is to get a GP appointment. Uh, you know, uh, that's why we're going to invest in training more GPs and, 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 in, and providing more GP appointments. So it will relieve some pressure on the wider NHS as well. Um, I'm interested as well uh, because John McDonnell has said that he wants to try and end private sector involvement in the NHS. Uh, as contracts run out, he wants to bring them in-house. But the majority of dentists are actually private contractors. So how does this work? Because what we're talking about is reversing the privatisation we've seen in recent years. We're not talking about um, ripping up the fundamentals of the NHS, because in 1948, when the NHS was created, the GPs were essentially private contractors. As you say, dentists are private contractors. What so we're talking about is the more... Re okay, just the right kind. Yeah, yeah but, we're, no, but we're, talk we're, we're talking about the more recent Tory privatisations we've seen. Typically, for example, because of the Health and Social Care Act, which this government brought in, a, a children's health contract in an area will be handed over to Virgin Care. And actually, if so, Virgin Care don't win the tender, they sue the NHS. It's those sorts of contracts we're bringing to an end, this sort of constant competitive tendering of contracts, which is actually wasteful, it's bureaucratic, it creates a fragmented system when we should be joining up different, different health bodies in a local area. So we're going to bring that to an end. That's so what we Tory privatisation is bad, but other privatisation is OK? But, but the GPs and the dentists and uh, um, some of the um, op, you know, opticians have had private contracts with the NHS since it was created. What we're talking about is these contracts which in recent times, children's health contracts, or for example a patient transport contract which in Sussex went to a firm that dis didn't even have any ambulances. This is non-emergency ambulatory contract. It went to a firm with no ambulances. They subcontracted to umpteen other firms. Two of the subcontracted firms went bust and patients were left on their doorsteps waiting when they should have been picked up for dialysis appointments. It, that shows you that Tory privatisation is wasteful and it's not in the interest of patient care. We're going to no. bring that racket to an end. We've uh, just been speaking to Brandon Lewis about the Conservative Party plans for immigration. Uh, he said quite clearly that if people vote Conservative, Conservative government would try and bring immigration down. What about a Labour government? Would you like to see immigration go up or down? I'll tell you something. Every general election I fought, the Tories have made these promises. Every single general election, oh, the Tory Labour immigration minister get. I know, but the Tory immigration minister gets wheeled out to say this. Have they ever delivered it? Have they, heck? I mean, do you believe him? I don't. So, well, look, to be fair I've to Brandon said... Lewis, he says that now uh, that we're out of the EU, there'll be more uh, ability to control oh, right. immigration. Oh, but right. no, I'm, what can, I'm keen to now. know, right. what I am actually really they can keen do it to now, know, can they? is All right, yeah. What, yeah. what I'm really Probably keen to know Brandon. is what Labour's policy is here. Uh, what would a Labour government yeah. like to see? Would you like to see immigration go up or down? We want a balanced approach to immigration. And what that means for the NHS is if a hospital trust thinks that a surgeon or a, uh, a nurse or a midwife is qualified enough to come to our country to care for our sick and our elderly and offers them that, that opportunity, then they should be allowed to come to our country to care for our sick and our elderly. What actually the Tories are doing is imposing a nurses tax on nurses across the EU who want to come here, even though we've always, always relied on European nurses in our NHS. Uh, they want to impose a tax on them to come here and care for our sick. I do not think that is a sustainable or credible approach to the staffing crisis in the NHS when we know we're short of 100,000 staff, we're short of 40,000 staff. It was revealed yesterday that NHS staff are working a million extra hours a week unpaid because of Tory a, understaffing in the NHS. It's a really, really simple question. Would a Labour government like to see immigration go up or down? No, a Labour government will have a balanced, fair approach to immigration. But what does that mean? Does and that mean you want, want it to go up or down? Well, because look, what Brandon Lewis is saying, it's going to go, you know, we've got these targets, it's going to go down. They've never delivered on that. But never. what do you want the to reason do? They've never, At least we the, know the what reason they are they, the reason to the do. government. But they never deliver it. And the reason they know they, ha they haven't delivered on it is because that is not a sensible way to run an immigration system. You run an immigration system based on the needs of your economy and the needs of sectors in your economy. So as we know in the NHS, we've always relied on international recruitment. The NHS should be allowed to continue to recruit internationally and ethically, of course, but we should be allowed to recruit internationally. And as I say, if a hospital needs a surgeon or a hospital needs a midwife or a nurse, they shouldn't be restricted by the government's hindrances from recruiting. They are restricted at the moment, and it's partly why, it's not the only reason why, but it's partly why we have such a workforce crisis in the NHS. At the risk of sounding a bit like a broken record, 
Would a Labour government well, like we, to we, see immigration go up or down? I'm, I'm still confused. I don't know. Because, well, we're not going to, well, well, Labour government is not going to set an arbitrary target like the government are because they're not credible. They're never delivered. They've never been delivered for 10 years under this Tory government. And every general election campaign, these Tory ministers get wheeled out uh, to make this claim, to promise it, and do they ever deliver it? No, because they know it's not a credible, sensible approach to managing immigration. OK. Um, I'm keen to talk about another really important issue, uh, which is um, Scotland, and whether or not a Labour government would grant uh, a Scottish independence referendum. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's been talking about this this week. Uh, originally, he said uh, that a, a Labour government wouldn't grant one in the first term in office. He then said it wouldn't be granted in the first two years. So can you just clarify what the policy is on this really important issue? No, look, look, a, a referendum on independence in Scotland uh, is not our policy. We don't believe one will be, should be granted. Uh, look, it's up to the Scottish people to, de to demand what they want, but we don't believe it's in the interests of the United Kingdom. We believe the interests of the United Kingdom uh, are that we stay together, because we are, if you like, stronger together as one United Kingdom. So when Jeremy Corbyn says it's not a priority for the first term, it, that is the position of the Labour Party. So it's the first term, not the first couple of years? Yes, yes, we are not offering a referendum. We're not offering a referendum on Scottish independence. Again, this is a, a Tory line because they, because, they, because they want to say there's, there's a sort of a Scottish referendum coming which will break up the, the United Kingdom. It's not true. So what if the SNP win a majority in Holyrood? They will say that that is then a mandate to request another re referendum and that if a Labour government doesn't grant one, then you're blocking the will of the Scottish people. Well, you know something, when you look at the state of the Scottish NHS, which is also failing on a lot of its key targets and actually in its and has actually cut quite savagely some of its what in England we call the public health budgets like addiction budgets for drug and alcohol uh, uh, services I'll actually be campaigning for the for Richard Leonard and the Scottish Labour Party and I'm confident that we can get a Scottish uh, government elected in the next set of Scottish parliamentary elections when they come along I'm not going to deal with the hypotheticals of what happens if the SNP win because I'm confident we're going to get a, a, a Labour victory up in Scotland OK. Um, now, just finally, and this, you might say that this is another hypothetical question. In fact, I'm sure you probably will. Um, but <laughs> if the Labour oh, Party try, doesn't win the next election, if you don't win the election, should Jeremy oh, come on. Oh, stand that's, down a, that's a big... That's a hypothetical. I knew you were going to say the it. The Labour Party's going to win. The Labour Party's going to win, and we're going to rebuild the NHS so we've not got elderly people languishing on trolleys for hours and hours and hours. We've not got cancer patients waiting beyond two months for treatment, and so that our young people get the mental health support they've been so cruelly denied under this Tory government. OK, Jonathan Ashworth, thank you very much for uh, being with us uh, today. Thank you.